Are you one of the thousands of people waiting for tourism to open in Japan? Are you hopeful that your time to travel will come soon and want to start planning now? Got nothing better to do and just want to watch a video about travel? Well then, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Marista. I'm a person living in Japan, and as such, people often tell me things like, I'm planning a trip in a couple of years. What are some travel tips for Japan? Or, what Japanese travel agencies do you recommend? And, is living in Japan like being in the future? So today, we're going to talk about some travel tips for Japan once it's allowed again. Even though Japan is a small country, there are many places to visit from the popular Tokyo and Osaka areas to less frequented ones like Shirakawago and Miyazaki. With this in mind, we're going to share some general tips that will make your trip just a little bit easier. If you want tips for a specific city, let us know down in the comments and we will continue this series by creating videos with more advice on food, activities, and sightseeing in those locations. Japan is known for its abundance of train stations and timely transportation as it's the main way people get around. So when you come to Japan, there are a few different ways you can utilize the rail system. One way to do this is to get a JR or Japan Rail Pass. I actually did this on my very first trip to Tokyo back in 2016. It was really convenient as it allowed me to ride around on the JR lines as much as I wanted for two weeks after paying in advance. You do have to be living outside of Japan in order to get this pass as it is specifically made for tourists. They'll send it to your house and you will be able to validate it upon arriving. They also sell Shinkansen tickets as well if you plan on visiting many places throughout the country that are far apart. My other recommendation is to get an IC card. This is a regular Japanese train pass that you can load with money and they can be created at many train stations throughout the country. Some card names you might already be familiar with are Suica, Pasmo, and Ikoka, with each servicing a different region in Japan. These cards are great because they allow you to ride local lines and buses as well as some JR trains and you can reload them at konbinis across the country. This will allow for more intimate travel in Japan and if you get the Welcome Suica or Pasmo Passport, a temporary four-week pass best for if you only want to visit Japan once then you won't have to pay a deposit fee. However, you can't use these cards on the Shinkansen, so you will have to purchase a separate ticket if you want to ride that. But, if you keep your IC card and don't wait 10 years between uses, it will remain valid and you can use it on your next trip to Japan with any remaining money that might have been left over from the first one. This tip is an especially good one if you're in a large party or you're a heavy packer. Get your suitcases delivered wherever you're staying. At major airports like Narita or Haneda, if you're flying into the Kanto region, you can arrange to have your suitcases delivered to your hotel so that you won't have to lug them around on trains or in taxis. Lug Agent is a popular international company that services Tokyo, Sapporo, Osaka, and Kyoto, and they even have overnight storage services. Another good company is Kuruneko Yamato, whose Black Cat logo is known nationwide. Like most luggage services, you'll be able to have your suitcases delivered to and from the airport of your choice, so long as you have the full address of your lodging and Japanese phone number. Yamato is really convenient and they're going to handle your goods with the utmost care. There are other luggage service agencies like QL Liner, Sagawa Express, and JAL ABC with a range of prices and service areas for all of your needs and English support for foreign travelers. Now some of you may have noticed that I mentioned the need for a Japanese phone number and that is where our next tip comes into play. 
These are especially useful if your trip is going to last for two weeks or more. While a SIM card is not absolutely necessary for your time in Japan, it can be helpful. If you plan on using a lot of services, making reservations at restaurants, or taking part in certain excursions, you'll need a Japanese phone number to include with your reservation. Also, having portable Wi-Fi is a smart idea because not every building, especially if you're out somewhere in the countryside, is going to have free Wi-Fi that you can just jump on. You can get one of these SIM Wi-Fi combos before even leaving the airport by checking one of the service counters on your way out. I recommend Sakura Mobile. This isn't sponsored, they're just personally what I use. They have super helpful and friendly staff, English speaking support, and they can get everything settled and arranged for your arrival before you even board your flight. Now, I'm not saying you have to have every activity planned out to a T. In fact, leaving some free time for visiting onsen or discovering hidden gems in the city is highly recommended. However, there should be at least a little structure to your trip. Once you know what cities you want to go to, do some research. Yes, on what cool tourist attractions there are, but also what the local area is known for. Each city in Japan has something special that is unique or hard to find in other parts of the country. For example, Aomori is known for having the best apples. So if you plan to come in the fall, consider taking an apple picking trip and sampling some of the local cuisine made with apples. Perhaps you could try a soba making class in Chiba where they use locally grown wheat to give a unique flavor to these classic beloved noodles. Or if you find yourself in Hiroshima, try a craft making class where you can make things like brushes to take home as a keepsake. When you can, try talking to locals too, if you and they are feeling up to it, because it's a great way to learn about local places that are really cool that you're not going to find online. Even having a general idea of what you want to do will give great inspiration for gifts to get, experiences to try, and how much money to save. Which brings us to our final tip. Be sure to check your country's conversion rate to find out if your currency is more or less in yen. Japan doesn't have to be expensive, and it can be a lot of fun on the cheap, but save more than you think you'll need anyway. Once you've got all of your general costs figured out, like flights, transportation, lodging, etc., double that. Why, you might ask? Chances are you will get the opportunity to do something amazing you hadn't thought of, or go somewhere you weren't planning, or find the perfect omiyage that is a little pricey, but you have to have. It's always better to have some extra funds saved up because no one wants to get toward the end of the vacation only to realize the money they, they budgeted is almost gone. This tip may seem obvious to some, but it never hurts to mention it as a reminder. Also, bring cash with you everywhere. In a lot of ways, Japan is still very much a cash-based society and you can't use your card everywhere that you shop. Plus, if you have to pull out money, you will be charged an ATM fee and most likely another fee from your bank. This adds up very quickly, so it's best to just keep your money somewhere safe where you're staying and pull out what you think you'll need, plus a little extra, before heading out for the day's activities. Like I said, these are just some general tips that might make your journey a bit easier if you've never traveled in Japan before. I am thinking of doing a follow-up video on travel agencies as well, so if you want to see something along those lines, show the like button some love, and of course subscribe so that you don't miss out on helpful videos like this one. I do think and I hope that borders will open up again soon and we can share the beauty of Japan together again, but until then, be sure to stay safe out there travelers. And as always, my friends, eat well and travel often. See ya.
So today we're going to talk about some travel chips. There are a couple of different ways you can utilize the trail the trail system. Some familiar cards that you might know are Suica, Pass Mode, Try craft making like brushes that you can take home as a, se a secret. This tip me <laughs> like I said, these are just some general chip chips. General chips, are you here? 